The I know gas equation kind of explains how gases behave, but they don't really explain, it doesn't really explain why the molecules are behaving the way they do. And so that's where the kinetic molecular theory comes in. And there are like five basic tenets of the kinetic molecular theory. Uh, and the first one is that gases consist of a large number of molecules. So you have a whole bunch of molecules and they are in continuous random motion. So gases are crazy. They're moving around a lot. You got a whole bunch of them. Um, the second one is that the combined volume of all the molecules in the gas is negligible relative to the total volume. So that really means uh, the volume of your container that, that you have your molecules in is so big compared to the size of each molecule, um, actually the whole collection of molecules, that each molecule, we're going to approximate that it has the entire volume to move around in. So suppose you had a container like this and you had molecules in there. What we're really saying is, okay, so those are your molecules. See how they're actually taking up space? We're going to assume in this case that the uh, molecules are so small compared to the size of the container that each one of these molecules has the whole container to move around in. So the volume is the, the entire space, even though you can see some of these um, molecules are actually taking up space in the, in the container. So that's part of the, um, one of the assumptions we're making for an ideal gas. We're also saying that the molecules basically don't see each other, that the att attractive and repulsive forces between the gas molecules are negligible, so they don't see each other. They can bump into each other, they can transfer energy during collisions, uh, but the average kinetic energy is not going to change as long as the temperature doesn't change. So don't change the temperature and the average kinetic energy is not going to change. And then finally, the average kinetic energy is proportional to the absolute te um, temperature. So that's your, you know, your Kelvin temperature. So kinetic energy is related to temperature. So those are your five main tenets of the kinetic molecular theory. So if you were to look, kind of look at um, kinetic energy and how that relates to how many molecules you have at, at certain speeds and how fast they're traveling, um, so here are here's a picture of two different temperatures where the blue one that's at a colder temperature and the red curve is at a higher temperature. What you can see is that the average speed, and again we're, we're measuring the you know the the most probable speed is kind of like right at the peak of this curve. Uh, and over here, for a cold temperature, you have um, more molecules traveling at a slower speed, and at a higher temperature, molecules are traveling at a um, a faster speed. So the, the average, and again, there's different ways to, to calculate an average when you're talking about all these, um, these speeds. You can look at like the most probable speed, um, root mean square, and the differences are a little bit subtle. So the, the most probable speed is like right at the peak of that curve. Um, the root mean square is similar to how you calculate a, a mean, like if you were in math class. Um, a little bit different. It's basically looking at uh, find a molecule that has the, the kinetic, kinetic energy that's the same as the average kinetic energy and then look at that speed, that average speed there. So it's similar to a, a mean. So th that's just a little background on the kinetic molecular theory. So moving on to molecular effusion and diffusion. Effusion, this is a picture of, of effusion. You basically have molecules trapped in a container and you have this little tiny um, hole that they're trying to escape out of. So they're effusing out of this, um, through this little tiny hole in an evacuated space. We can measure the rates um, at which molecules effuse or defuse, and we have that, basically it's related to the molar mass. So you can think about having gases trapped in a balloon, and you have one, one balloon filled with helium, one balloon filled with nitrogen. Uh, it turns out that the helium balloon would deflate faster than uh, the nitrogen because helium weighs less, it has a lower molar mass, those molecules are going to uh, travel faster, they're going to find their way out of the balloon faster than uh, the nitrogen. Diffusion is a little bit different, um, principles generally the same, but diffusion is when you're spreading one substance throughout a space or throughout a second substance. So you can imagine if you sprayed some perfume in the corner of a room, those molecules, those gas molecules from the perfume are eventually going to um, diffuse their way throughout the room and you'll be able to smell it on the other side. So that's like an example of diffusion. Um, you can watch this YouTube video. Um, I'm not going to record it in here, but in your notes you can pull those up and you can watch another video based on diffusion. That's fine. And Graham's Law is what we're going to use to figure out um, or, or diffusion. So to calculate diffusion or the rates of, of, of diffusion, diffusion. So the 
this is how, this is the equation. Square root of the molar mass one over square root of molar mass two is equal to rate two over rate one. And we're getting this, uh, we're deriving this equation um, from this equation right here. So I derived this a little bit differently than they do it in the book. But if kinetic energy one equals kinetic energy two, so suppose you're not changing the temperature. As long as you're at constant temperature, this is going to work. Kinetic energy one is equal to energy two. Um, kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Um, so I have one half m one v one squared equals one half m two v two squared. You won't ever have to derive this. I'm just showing you where, one way to get this equation, um, and the book shows you another using uh, the using root mean square. But we didn't get into that. So. Basically, oh, we're setting these two equal to, to each other. The halves will cancel, right? The one half cancels on both sides because it's the same. So I decide, divide both sides by one half. Um, I'm going to divide now by m2, bring my m2 over here, divide this side by v1 squared over there. So I get m1 over m2 is v2 squared over v1 squared. Take the square root of both of those. And v is basically your, your velocity and m is your mass. I'm relating this to molar mass, and then the velocity is the rate, like how, how yeah. So after you take the, the square root of both sides, you get square root of m1 over m2 equals rate two over rate one, which is what we got over there. So that's Graham's law. Um, and again, there's another video that kind of um, shows you an, an application of this. But we can walk through a one of the problems, a problem, a pretty common problem. Um, related to Graham's law. So an unknown gas composed of a homonuclear diatomic molecule. So think about what a homonuclear diatomic molecule is. That's something like H2 homonuclear means the one type of nucleus, but you have two of them because it's diatomic. So H2 or you have N2, O2, all those sorts of diatomic molecules. Remember there are seven. Um, commonly occurring diatomic molecules. So an unknown gas composed of a homonuclear diatomic molecule effuses at a rate that is 0.355 times the rate at which oxygen effuses um, at the same temperature. Calculate the molar mass of the unknown and identify it. Okay, so we can set up our variables. The rate of the unknown, we don't know what it is. We just know that it, we know what it is in with respect to the rate of oxygen. So it's 0.355 times the rate of oxygen. Uh, and we know the molar mass of oxygen, right, which is 16 times 2, so that's 32. Uh, so I get rate of whatever our unknown is divided by the rate of oxygen is equal to the square root of the molar mass of oxygen divided by the molar mass of our unknown. So do you see how these are kind of flipped? If your unknown is here, then your unknown is here. Your known is here, your known is there. So I have oxygen here, I have my unknowns um, on those sides. So if I, as long as I'm defining the rate of uh, my unknown with respect to oxygen, right? So the rate of the unknown is 0.355 times the rate of oxygen. These rates cancel. So it's that ratio of those rates. I don't know what the rate of oxygen is. I have no idea. They didn't tell me that. They just told me that my unknown is 0.355 times the rate of, the, of oxygen. And then I have the square root of um, the molar mass of oxygen over my unknown. So those cancel. So I end up with 0.355 equals the square root of that. So now if I square both sides to get rid of my square root, and I'm going to square this side here, I end up with 0.355 squared equals 32. Um, and then that the molar mass of that is 254. Since this is a homonuclear diatomic molecule, um, I know I have two atoms in here. So if I divided it by two, 127 is my um, is one of the atoms, right? So times two would give me the, the molar mass. So when you look up the uh, molar mass in the periodic table, you find out that that's iodine. So I2 is my homonuclear uh, diatomic gas that is effusing at a rate that is 0.355 times the amount of oxygen. So if you really think about it, right, it's, it's moving slower than oxygen. It's like a third of the fastest, how fast oxygen is moving. So you would expect that uh, that iodine, um, that that the unknown would have a greater molar mass. So this is just an application of of Graham's law.